Hello, my name's Adjua Ando. Um, I'm an actor, a director, a writer, and I'm an associate at the RSC, which is why I'm talking to you today about Shakespeare and what's his relevance. Um, so I'm actually answering a couple of questions that you uh, sent into the homework section uh, uh, to the RSC. What does Shakespeare's legacy mean to you? Is one of the questions. And Shakespeare's characters seem to have rich people problems. Why should we care? All right, let's do it. Why are you watching this? Are you studying Shakespeare? Have you seen a Shakespeare play on stage, on TV, on film? Or have you heard one on a podcast or on the radio? Do you love Shakespeare? Or do you think his plays are incomprehensible, ye olde language that has nothing to do with you and your life? Or are you somewhere in between? So why is Shakespeare relevant today? The writer James Baldwin, I'll tell you about him, started off thinking that Shakespeare wasn't. He was African-American, gay, chain-smoking, civil rights activist in America in the 1950s and the 1960s. He was a fierce critic of his homophobic, racist homeland, and as a young man saw nothing that connected him to Shakespeare. OK, we'll come back to him in a bit. How about Nelson Mandela, first black president of South Africa? He was a lawyer, a boxer, and a political activist who fought against apartheid. So for those of you who don't know, apartheid, that was the legal system in South Africa, which said, unless you were white, your life was not of value. You were not allowed to live where you wanted, travel where you wanted, love who you wanted, study where you wanted. You had the worst housing, the worst jobs, the worst pay, the worst health care, the worst, worst education, and you were subservient to all white people. So Mandela fought for equality and justice and with his fellow activists was imprisoned on a brutal island prison uh, called Robin Island. In his life, he was imprisoned for 27 years. So pretty much a third of his life, he was in jail. And what was the book that they had smuggled into jail to keep them going, to keep their spirits up? The complete works of Shakespeare. Mandela and his allies found comfort and encouragement in the words of Shakespeare and in his plays and in the situations of the characters and how they dealt with them and how they got through tricky situations. For Mandela particularly, he loved Julius Caesar. So there's a, a moment in the story of Julius Caesar where Caesar's wife, Calpurnia, has been having terrible nightmares and she thinks that they are telling her of Caesar's death, her husband's death. So she tries to keep him at home and keep him safe. And he replies, cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. Of all the wonders that I yet have heard, it seems to me most strange that men should fear, seeing that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. That really spoke to those activists, especially Mandela, and especially when they were frightened. Julius Caesar is saying to them there, make your life count. We all die. Have courage. Don't let fear stop you from fighting for justice. And talking of justice. On the 31st of May, along with many other people, I went to Trafalgar Square and I knelt for eight minutes and 46 seconds, which is the time it took for Derek Chauvin to murder George Floyd. And as I was kneeling, what came into my head were the words of Shylock from a speech in The Merchant of Venice. Shylock says, the villainy you teach me, I will execute, and it shall go hard, but I will better the instruction. This is a speech by a Jewish man, Shylock, to the anti-Semitic tormentors who refuse to see him as their equal because he's Jewish. But it says to all of us, 
that we are all human and all should be seen as equal, regardless of our race, our religion and all the other things used to separate us, like our gender, our sexuality, our income, our class. Here's another thought. If you have ever been in love with someone who you think is way out of your league, then you would understand how the jailer's young daughter feels in Two Noble Kinsmen. She says, Why should I love this gentleman? Tis odds he never will affect me. I am base, my father the mean keeper of his prison, and he a prince. To marry him is hopeless. To be his whore is witless. Out upon it! What pushes are we wenches driven to when fifteen once has found us? She thinks her life is over at fifteen because this man is out of her league. Have we not been there? Or if you've been heartbroken, like the person you love has fallen out of love with you and you don't know why, then you'd get how Hermione feels in The Winter's Tale when she says to the man she's in love with, the crown and comfort of my life your favour. I do give lost, for I do feel it gone, but know not how it went. If you worry about climate change and the state of the planet or COVID-19, the way we humans mess with the balance of nature, then listen to Ulysses in Troilus and Cressida when he says, but when the planets in evil mixture to disorder wander, what plagues and what portents, what mutiny, what raging of the sea, shaking of earth, commotion in the winds, frights, change, horrors, divert and crack, rend and deracinate the unity and married calm of states quite from their fixtures. Or if you feel like you don't know who you are in the world or where you belong, then hear what Richard II says. I have no name, no title, no, not that name was given me at the font, but tis usurped. Alack the heavy day that I have worn so many winters out and know not now what name to call myself. You see, Shakespeare made his living as an actor and a writer. He didn't come from great wealth. And if he didn't sell his work or get an acting job, he didn't eat. So he had to write his truth while being supported by the rich and powerful who allowed his work on stage or not and paid for it. He had to make his work relevant to the poor and powerless and entertain everyone. And he did it by speaking to all of us as human beings. In Shakespeare's plays, you see the goody and the baddie in all of us. He lets us look at the stories of kings and queens and faraway strange lands and see our own lives there. The bits we love, the bits we're ashamed of, the bits we hate. Stuff that makes us laugh and stuff that makes us rage and weep. And those feelings are never out of date and are never irrelevant. Yes, the language can seem tricky at first, but so can a dance move or the offside rule in football. It's just like watching a movie that's not in your accent. In the first minute or so, you've got to tune your ear in and then it starts to make sense. I wish I could work with you a lot on this, but just let me say a couple of things. With everything in life, and in this case, in Shakespeare, just because it may seem hard to begin with doesn't mean it's not worth the effort if it's interesting to you. So don't let anyone make you think that anything is not for you if you love it or are curious about it. The world is yours to explore. You are worthy of anything you choose to be interested in. You just be you and grab whatever touches your heart. And if it's the work of the man who wrote on a heartbeat, because that's all the iambic pentameter of a Shakespeare line is, to dum to dum to dum to dum to dum heartbeat series of heartbeats why did he write like that 
because as human beings, we all share a heartbeat. If you put a bunch of people in a theatre for long enough, their hearts start to beat at the same time because that's what we are. We're all the same. We're all human beings. So if Shakespeare touches your heart, search him out and own it. I'll let Jimmy Baldwin, black, gay, American writer and activist, we talked about at the beginning, I'll let him have the last words. But I'm going to do it in an American accent because you've got to have the swing. The greatest poet in the English language found his poetry where poetry is found in the lives of the people. He could have done this only through love, by knowing, which is not the same as understanding, that whatever was happening to anyone was happening to him. I think it is simply that he walked his streets and saw them and tried not to lie about what he saw. To be a part of people who have ears to hear and hear not, who have eyes to see and see not. That is why he is called a poet. And his responsibility, which is also his joy and his strength and his life, is to defeat all labels and complicate all battles by insisting on the human riddle. To bear witness as long as breath is in him to that mighty, transfiguring force which lives in the soul of man. And to aspire to do his work so well that when the breath has left him, the people, all the people who search in the rubble for a sign or a witness will be able to find him there. Yep. That is Shakespeare for me. Search in him and you will find yourself there.